Hey guys, it's Haley and welcome to another bookish video. Today I'm going to be getting into my September TBR. I'm literally so excited. Can y'all tell I'm ready for fall? Like the lights are up, the sweatshirt is on, it's going down. It is fall. And if you think it's too early, I don't know what to tell you. It's literally 95 degrees outside right now and I'm into it, so get into it. Obviously in this video, I'm gonna be getting into my September TBR. If you don't know what a TBR is, that stands for to be read. So these are all of the books that I'm going to want to read in September. But before we get into the TBR, I do wanna thank the sponsor of today's video, which is Book of the Month. I love Book of the Month. I've been subscribed to them for three years, literally paid with my own money. I am obsessed with them. If you don't know about Book of the Month, they offer between five to seven picks of brand new and sometimes early release books across all different genres for you to pick from every single month. So I'll share with you what I picked for September. First up, I have Sleep Tight by J.H. Markert. And does this not look like the fall vibe? I'm so excited for it. This is a half mystery thriller, half horror vibes kind of book about a serial killer called, what's his name? Dr. Something? Father Silence. Not Father Silence. And the one survivor of this horrific serial killer is about to shed light on the situation. This is gonna be perfect for fall reading. I also chose an add-on this month and that is Mad Woman by Chelsea Beaker. Already just based on the cover and the description, like you know it's gonna be a good for her moment, which is perfect for me. I love a good for her book. And it's a gripping story of motherhood, mother loss, and the brutal mighty things women must do to keep themselves alive. What what will it take to end the cycles of violence? Phenomenal description. So those are just two of the options for September. And they usually have really varied options across all different types of genre. Like I mentioned, they have romance, historical, literary, horror, mystery. I mean, everything. They have the best new fiction at the best price. And they also have audiobooks, which I've bought, I think like five or six of their audiobooks. If you would rather get an audio pick than a hardcover pick, you can do that as well. So if you want to try out a book of the month this month, you can use the code CARDIGAN and get your first book of the month for only $5. Are you kidding me? One of those or another pick of your choice for $5? You can't beat it. Also love that the code is CARDIGAN. Obviously, Book of the Month is getting into the fall vibes as well. So you can check that out down below. And thank you so, so much to Book of the Month for sponsoring today's video. Now let's go ahead and get into the September books. Usually, I have like very intricate, detailed TBR plans. The past few months especially, I've had like a million and one vlogs planned out. Obviously... <laughs> Not all of those vlogs have worked out. A lot of them I had to scrap because I either got halfway through and stopped filming or I just had life things coming up, etc. So I'm gonna stop putting <laughs> the vlog expectations on myself in September. Also, I'll be doing some traveling in September. So I just kind of want an unstructured, very happy vibes, no pressure, no expectations, fall TBR. The books I'll be mentioning in this this video are across three broad categories of the types of books I would like to read this month. Of course we have horror books because we are getting into spooky season. It wouldn't be spooky season without a horror read. Of course we have mystery thrillers, a lot of new release mystery thrillers. And then the final category we have here is fantasy. Yes, I'm gonna be back in my fantasy era, just like I promised you at the beginning of the year. Remember, everyone thought it was fake when I stopped reading fantasy during the summertime. It just wasn't the summer vibe, but I'm ready to get back in. So let's go ahead and start there. And if you're not into fantasy, you can go ahead and skip this section. I promise you will not hurt my feelings. It's totally fine. I was fantasy resistant for so, so long, so I get it. But let's go ahead and start out with a book that I just hauled. This is a standalone fantasy. I 
think that's easier for me to get into than a whole series. And this is When Women Were Dragons by Kelly Barnhill. In this world, it's very similar to our own world, except for one event that happened quite a few years ago in 1955. Hundreds of thousands of women sprouted wings, grew scales and talons, and took to the skies. They were just turned into dragons. But our main character and her mother did not. So she's wondering, why didn't they turn into dragons? Why did her aunt, why did the woman down the street, like what delineates who's gonna be a dragon and who was left a normal woman? But it's too taboo to speak of, so she has to investigate it herself. It is timeless, it is speculative, it is about dragons, and I was so into the wyvern plotline of Throne of Glass. If you missed it, I have a whole Throne of Glass reading vlog where I read the entire series in a week, a week or so, but 5,000 pages in that short amount of time. It was a lot, but I had so much fun with it. I'll link it up above and down below if you missed it. When I read Throne of Glass, I was so struck by the Wyvern plotline. That was the one that kept my attention the most. So I'm excited for more dragon content. And following that same idea, <laughs> I think y'all know what's coming. In September, I would like to read Fourth Wing. I'm feeling a little left out. All the girls know everything about fourth wing. I don't know anything about it. And I have this beautiful edition with the black sprayed edges. So I would like to read fourth wing and iron flame in the month of September. Obviously, if I read these, I'm going to vlog them. I really wanna to get to these because I want to solidify my opinion, whether I love it, whether I hate it, I wanna let y'all know what I'm thinking. I'm really excited. Especially, I did not know this, the tagline is fly or die, hello? It's only two books, okay, I won't be overwhelmed. It won't be like jumping into Crescent City, which those books are thick and there's three of them. These I feel like are manageable and there's only two, so I'll be fine. And honestly, I know like, Everyone's read this, but I literally, I don't know what this book is about. I know it's about some dragon school, right? Dragon tales, dragon tales, like what's going on? Okay, 20 year old Violet is supposed to enter the scribe quadrant, living a quiet life among books and history. Now the commanding general, also known as her tough as talons mother, has ordered Violet to join the hundreds of candidates striving to become the elite of Navarre, dragon riders. When you're smaller than everyone else, oh God, give me a fucking break. Is this gonna be a bitch who's like, oh, he's so tiny and your body is brittle and death is only a heartbeat away because dragons don't bond to fragile humans, they incinerate them. With fewer dragons willing to bond than cadets, most would kill Violet to better their own chances of success. The rest would kill her just for being her mother's daughter. She'll need every edge her wits can give her just to see the next sunrise. With every day that passes, the war outside grows more deadly and the kingdom's protections are failing. The death toll continues to rise. Okay, so this girl, has to become a dragon rider because of her mother and hopefully learn how to fight in this war and protect her land. And I'm pretty sure there's gonna be a romance along the way. I don't know if it's a romance with a dragon. That, I don't know, that'd be hard for me to get into, I'm not gonna lie. But if it's a romance with a human man and then maybe the his dragon and her dragon have a little soiree, I could get into that. We will see. Fourth wing, highly anticipated. Here we go. And the last fantasy book that I have on my TBR is The Serpent and the Wings of Night by Carissa Broadbent. I've been hearing so much about this book and I actually have the second one on my Kindle. All of these books are on KU. I didn't know that when I bought the first one physically, but <laughs> now I have the physical book. Cool, here it is. And this is very much like romanticy, not fantasy, okay? For humans or vampires, the rules of survival are the same. Never trust, never yield, and always, always guard your heart. The adopted human daughter of the vampire king carved her place in a world designed to kill her. Her only chance to become something more than prey is entering the Kejari, a legendary tournament held by the goddess of death. But she has to fight vicious warriors from different vampire houses. And to survive, she has to make an alliance with a mysterious rival, this like dark rain person, a ruthless vampire and efficient killer. Oh my God, she's drawn to him. So it's a vampire tournament where she falls in love with a rival 
Vampire Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think y'all, y'all might've eaten with this one. We will see. So that's the fantasy I will hopefully be getting into in September. I'm excited. I'm excited for this era for me. Next up, let's get into horror. First up, we have In This House of Skin and Wombs by Kyle Edwards. Thank you so much, Kyle, for sending this book to me. I'm so interested in this. This is like hearkening back to my extreme horror days a little, a little, a little. This is not gonna be extreme in a problematic way, I'm hoping, because it's described as like women, women are fighting, okay? So I, I'm holding out hope here. Uh, basically a bunch of women are chained and held in a basement and Allison has to fight to get out. Her and her sister have to get out alive. And she's also wondering like why and how? All these women came to be trapped in a basement. I think there's gonna be more to it than just a straightforward like slasher killer situation. So we will see. I also have Incidents Around the House by Josh Mallerman. I have been closely gatekeeping my Haley Ween TBR. If you don't know, I host a readathon every October called Happy Haley Ween. And I've been trying to hide away my TBR. This book was on it, but I fear Everyone hyping up this book in my Patreon has made me remove this from my Halloween TBR because I need to read it as soon as possible. Everyone is giving this five stars. I'm so excited for it. it. Has a creepy kid trope, which I love. It's about this little girl who loves her whole family and she's just like living her little life. Um, and that family includes other mommy. Other mommy, the dark mysterious presence that wishes to go inside her soul. <laughs> yeah. I'm obsessed. And uh, by the way, this is a book of the month book that I got previously in a past month. So if you get book of the month, you can add this as an add-on for $9.99. I believe all their add-ons are $9.99. So really good deal. Next up we have At Dark, I Become Loathsome by Eric LaRocca. This is the new novel from Eric LaRocca that will not come out until 2025, but I'm obsessed with Eric LaRocca's writing. So I'm going to read it ASAP. It's about really heavy themes. Okay. Grief, suicidality, and this one phrase that is typed out on the internet, if you are reading this, you've likely thought the world would be a better place without you. And when a man sees this phrase, it gets inside his mind and he does things about it. I don't know, we're gonna see, it's gonna be dark, it's gonna be crazy. I'm ready. Next up, I have a couple books by Aurora Dimitri, new horror indie author. I'm super interested to get to know. We have New Match about a girl who submits her like horrible English teacher to a dating site as like a joke to fuck with her. And then her and all her friends start going missing. And we are wondering what's going on? Is this teacher a killer? <laughs> and I also have Vendetic Spawn. This is an 80s metal band slasher. <clears throat> Say less. This is another one my Patreon girlies have been obsessed with. The Eyes Are the Best Part by Monica Kim. This is about a female serial killer. She kills men, she eats them, she eats their eyeballs. It's a feminist psychological horror about the making of a serial killer from a Korean American perspective. So I love the cultural element here with the like standard good for her killer cannibalism plot. I feel like this is gonna be Mayfly, but make it like less campy, more like truly horrifying and make it Korean. And I'm very excited for that. I also have The Body Harvest by J.D. Seidlinger. And this is about a couple and they are chasers. Okay, if you're thinking twisters, you're wrong. Okay, what they're chasing here is illness. So this is a community who seeks out people and they're trying to have every disease, like a Pokemon, like collect them all kind of thing. This is gonna be some really intense body horror. It's gonna be gross. I hate reading about gross sickness stuff, but then I think the horror is gonna be like really effective. So I'm gonna try it. Hopefully I don't yak. Next up we have a five star prediction for me and that is Delicate Condition by Danielle Valentine. Really wanna read this and finish out the AHS Delicate season, which I never finished watching. It is based on this book and I'm really excited. It's 
apparently like feminist update on Rosemary's Baby about a woman who is a famous actress and she gets pregnant and then she starts feeling like like it's a gaslight situation like everyone around her is acting weird or not believing her and things go off the rails. I've heard really great things about it can't wait to get into it. Hopefully the five star prediction works out. And then this next book, I didn't really know where to put it. It's not really horror. It's also not really a thriller. Basically it's a dark academia story anthology. All these short stories called In These Hallowed Halls, edited by Marie O'Regan and Paul Kane, has stories from Olivia Blake, David Bell, Susie Yang, JT Ellison, Lane Fargo, absolutely love her, Tori Bovolino, Helen Grant, the list goes on. I love a good dark academia feel in fall, so I think I'll be taking this one to like a nice cozy cafe and just cozying up with it. And of of course our last section here is all of the mystery thrillers I'll want to read this month. Y'all will have to let me know down below which ones I should prioritize or put in the new release thriller vlog that I film every single month. Whatever books you're most excited to hear my thoughts on let me know. The ones that I see the most in the comments will be the ones that I put into my new release thriller vlog for September. I'll go ahead and start with the backlist thrillers actually because I don't know because I want to because I run this channel. This premise sounds so good to me I have to read it immediately. It's called Copycat by Alex Lake. Never read from this author before but very interested just based on the premise. It's about this woman Sarah who discovers that there are two Facebook profiles in her name. One is hers, one she's never seen, but everything on it is accurate. Photos of her friends, her husband, her kids, her new kitchen, all these pictures are like taken in and around her house, places she's been, but she's never taken any of these photos. She doesn't know where they came from. Who is stalking Sarah? Who made this double profile for her? And how do they have all these photos of her life? I don't know, we're gonna find out. Next up I have Method 1533 by Shannon Kirk. This one I mentioned in my last book haul, I literally hauled 70 books for the fall. I know it's excessive, a lot of them were sent to me, but yeah, it's a lot. This was one of them. Uh, I actually got it in a blind date with a book that is good for her themed. So this is gonna be a good for her thriller. Never heard of it, but it's about a kidnapped pregnant teenager who proves to be a ruthless survivor with only two missions that she wants to complete. Number one, to save her unborn child. And number two, to exact merciless revenge on her kidnapper. She is methodical, calculating, and scientific in her plotting. Is she a clinical sociopath? We don't know. But leaving nothing to chance and secure in her timing and practice, she waits for the perfect moment to strike. This book explores what happens when the victim is just as cold and calculating as her abductor. Ah, does that sound so good? I'm excited for it. This could be a diamond in the rough. And the last backlist thriller I have on my September TBR is The Last Time I Saw You by Liv Constantine. If I read this book, I will have read all of Liv Constantine's entire backlist and then I can do an author rating and ranking video on this author duo. I've loved a lot of their books so I'm really excited to make that video. And it's about Dr. Kate English who has it all. Okay, she's a doctor obviously. And not only is she the heiress to a large fortune, she also has a gorgeous husband, a perfect daughter, and a high-flying career, a beautiful home, like everything but all that changes the night her mother is found brutally murdered. She's distraught and she reaches out to her estranged best friend for support. All the distance is forgotten in that moment. But that evening, Kate's grief turns into horror when she receives an anonymous text. You think you're sad now? Just wait. By the time I'm finished with you, you'll wish you had been buried today. <gasps> What's going on? We got a friend from the past, we got an anonymous text, we got a dead mother. Who's out to get Kate? Now we will get into all of the new release thrillers I have as options for the vlog. First up, we have If Something Happens to Me by Alex Finlay. Alex Finlay books? 
kind of hit or miss for me, but I've heard good things about this one. It says, for the past five years, Ryan Richardson has relived that terrible night. The car door ripping open, the crushing blow to his head, and the hands yanking him from the vehicle, his girlfriend's piercing scream as she's taken. With no trace of her, a cloud of suspicion hangs over Ryan, but with no proof, he's never charged, though that does not matter to the internet trolls. Until he gets a call while he's abroad in Italy. The car has been found submerged in a lake with a cryptic note in his girlfriend's handwriting. If something happens to me, dot, dot, dot. Halfway around the world, he sees a man who has haunted his dreams since that very night of the accident. We have to solve the mystery of what happened at this accident. What happened with his girlfriend? Did he do it? I don't know. I also have The Night of the Storm by Nishta Parekh. And this is an isolated locked room murder mystery about a family who's all like hunkered down together during a hurricane. And throughout the course of the hurricane, people are gonna get picked off one by one. Who's the killer in this family? I don't know, we gotta find out. It's gonna give like knives out, rich people murdering each other, family turning on each other with this very atmospheric storm setting going on in the background. Next up we have God of the Woods by Liz Moore. This is about a disappearance of a little girl from a summer camp in the 70s. And she's not just any little girl that disappears from this camp, she's actually the daughter of the person who owns the camp itself. So pretty high stakes situation but here's the weird part she's not the only little child from this family this very prolific family that's been missing before so what's going on with this family where's the little girl i don't know we'll find out of course i have the new sherry lapina on my tbr what have you done historically i've loved sherry lapina books so spoiler alert this one's definitely gonna be in the vlog if you are excited to hear my review stay excited because I'm definitely reading this one. <laughs> it's about this sleepy little perfect town where nothing bad ever happens until one morning a little girl is found dead. Vultures circling her. What's going on? Who could have possibly done this? Sherry Lupina books are usually really fun, really fast, really twisty. I'm excited. Getting in to our last couple books here we have Bye Baby by Carola Lovering. On a brisk fall night in New York, 35-year-old Billy hears terrified screams. Her lifelong best friend Cassie, one floor above, has just realized her infant daughter is missing. Obviously, Billy is shaken as she looks down into her own arms to see the baby. Remembering with a jolt of fear, she's responsible for the kidnapping that has shattered her best friend's world. Once fiercely bonded, Cassie and Billy have drifted apart in adulthood. Cassie's married to a wealthy man, recently become a mother, and she is building a following as a lifestyle influencer online. She's also desperate to leave the past behind, including Billy, who is single and childless, no longer fitting into Cassie's world. Billy knows the worst thing Cassie's ever done, though, and she will do whatever it takes to restore their friendship. Oh. This sounds so good. I love a toxic female friendship. I love a vindictive, obsessive friend. I love these themes of like motherhood. And of course, I love a missing kid. At the end of the day, if I'm gonna read a thriller, it's gotta have a missing kid. We hate to see it, but we love to read about it. Can you imagine a more high stakes situation? Like if anything's gonna be a heart pumping thriller moment, it's a missing child. And the last new release thriller I have on my September TBR is Love Letters to a Serial Killer by Tasha Coriel. This is about a woman who is writing letters to a serial killer who's in prison. Just, you know, being quirky, being different, um, getting a little, little fun pen pal. <laughs> and then when another victim is found, even though he's in prison, they have no choice but to say, we've got the wrong guy, they let him free. He doesn't have anything to do, he has nothing to him after he releases from jail, obviously so many people still think he's a killer. So this woman that he's been writing back and forth with, he's like, yo, can I shack up with you? And she's like, yeah, you know what, whatever. So they quickly fall into a routine of domestic bliss. As blissful as one can feel while secretly investigating their partner for serial murder. <laughs> did he do it? Did he not? 
We'll find out through the lens of our quirky little serial killer lover. And that is gonna be it for my September TBR. Let me know down below the books I should prioritize, if you've read any of these, if you loved them. I'm so, so, so excited for fall reading, and I hope you guys are too. Thank you so, so much for watching this video. If you liked it, go ahead and give it a like and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Also, don't forget to go down below and check out Book of the Month. Again, you can get your first Book of the Month for only $5 with code CARDIGAN. And of course, don't forget to go to therapy and read a book this week. I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!